we will talk about belly fat or abdominal fat and we have two types of abdominal fat first is subcutaneous abdominal fat and second is visceral fat here is huge difference and one is dangerous and second is more safe visceral fats are much more dangerous and why visceral fats located directly inside abdomen and it envelopes internal organs so internal organs are surrounded by visceral fats and these visceral fats increases risks of many disease while subcutaneous fat is under the skin it, it's everywhere actually it's under the skin and it's not metabolically active and it has less health effects and less health risks now let's say how can we say if we see person how can we say this is subcutaneous fats or visceral fats it's impossible to uh, to distinguish persons if he has uh, high visceral fats or not but general principle is that if person has apple shaped body it's high probability that he has more visceral fats also waist circumference is important larger waist circumference means more visceral fats and protruded abdomen is more common among men but it's not guaranteed that such person has more visceral fats than subcutaneous fats but probability is high and now let's say why is visceral fats so dangerous because it's metabolically active and what means metabolically active imagine fat cells accumulated and fat cells are grown and they reach some point and after this they start depriving oxygen it means hypoxia these fat cells start starving and they and they dying they dying because of starvation because of hypoxia and when they dying they release different chemicals they are known as inflammatory cytokines they release inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 6 to necrosis factor alpha uh, and other inflammatory cytokines and these inflammatory cytokines uh, causes systemic inflammation in the body and this systemic inflammation in the body lasts for several years and sometimes it lasts decades and this low grade inflammation in the body causing destroying of small blood vessels and they also damages different internal organs different cells different tissues and we have health risks this damaged blood vessels causing cardiovascular disease and we have 300 percent increased cardiovascular disease because of this chronic inflammation and we have 20 percent increased risk of cancer why risk of cancer because chronic inflammation damages cells and when cells are damaged they are there is high risk of mutations and mutations causing cancer and also when we have low grade inflammation in the body it it's favorable environment for cancer growth that's why we have 20 percent higher risk of any kind of cancer if person has visceral fats excessive visceral fats and now let's say second mechanism how visceral fat is dangerous it's hormonal activity and when we say metabolically active we usually mean that it's, it releases hormones so visceral fat releases hormones which is called adipokines uh, especially leptin is important leptin is hormone which causing suppress of appetite in the brain but when visceral 
excessive visceral fat releases lots of leptin, our brain does not respond already. And we have lots of leptin, but no response. So uh, there is no appetite suppression anymore, but we have high leptin level. It is called leptin resistance. And leptin resistance is common problem when person has vis lots of visceral fats. Also, uh, visceral fats releases resistin is hormone also and um, adiponectin level is decreases and combination and disbalance between these two hormones also causing uh, insulin resistance and that's why we have 50% increased risk of insulin resistance and diabetes. Now let's say, is it subcutaneous fat safe? And yes, we already know that visceral fat is very dangerous. And is subcutaneous fat safe? No, it's not safe also, but it's safer than visceral fat. And we can compare, for example, Visceral fat increases cardiovascular disease by 300%, while subcutaneous fat increases cardiovascular disease only 50%. Visceral fat increases risk of diabetes 50%, and subcutaneous fat increases risk, this risk only 25%. And cancer risk also. Visceral fat increases 20%, and subcutaneous fat only 10%. So subcutaneous fat also not safe. So uh, it does not matter if person is obese or overweight, he or she still have increased risk of disease. But of course, it's important there is excessive visceral fats or not, because subcutaneous fat still harmful but less harmful and now let's say how we can say with naked eye that this person has increased risk we can say if for women waist circumference is more than 35 inches she already have increased risk of many disease and for men it's 40 inches if Waist circumference, circumference is more than 40 inches, it means he is increased risk of cardiovascular disease, risk of cancers, and risk of abundant or excessive visceral fats. And it's important to remember that every two inches of waist circumference, if person's waist circumference is increasing because of obesity, he gets 7% cardiovascular mortality risk on every 2 inches of waist circumference. And now let's say how these visceral fats are created. Why? What is risk factors? Most important risk factor is age. Because during age, our sex hormone levels decrease, our muscles are atrophic, and we have less muscle we lost muscle and uh, this combination increases weight gain probabilities and weight gain probabilities increase risk of visceral fat deposition also. And if we average on every decade, risk of visceral fat deposition increases 50%. To say more simple, every 10 years, our visceral fat increases by 15%. And now, now may you asking that how much visceral fat we have? We have around two kilograms of visceral fat from one to two kilograms. It depends on person. And gender difference also important because women have less visceral fats because of high level of estrogens and estrogen have anti-visceral fat action. So if woman is high in estrogen, she is more protected from visceral fats. Genetic also plays important role 
because of very specific genes which can increase 50 percent deposition of visceral fats so genetic factors is very important also and physical inactivity physical inactivity causes 30 percent increased risk increased deposition of visceral fat and unhealthy diet is also very important so does beverage and sweet drinks increase such risk trans fats are independent strong risk factor because trans, fa trans fats are directly correlated with visceral fats they even stimulate gene expressions which is responsible on fat deposition on this in the abdomen and visceral fat deposition so trans fats are huge risk factors and what is, what are trans fats it's margarine for example bakery products most bakery products includes margarine or unhealthy uh, oils and unhealthy fats it's trans fats in many chocolates also in many uh, ice creams uh, tra there is trans fats which is not healthy that's why a person should be very careful uh, with trans fats chronic stress sleep deprivation and smoking also important and now let's say how to reduce belly fat it's very important whole grains whole wheat bread oats they are very important because high content of dietary fiber and dietary fiber not only healthy but they inhibit uh, these fat absorptions from in intestines that's why they inhibit unhealthy fat absorptions that's why whole grain whole wheat bread oats and such uh, foods which are rich in dietary fibers are very important mono and polyunsaturated fats or good fats also important such as avocados nuts seeds olive and fish these good fats decreases risk of uh, visceral fat and decreases risk of mortality from cardiovascular disease that's why we should intake more uh, mono and polyunsaturated fats which are called which is called good fats and fruits and vegetables with high dietary fiber is strongly recommended uh, such foods are lots of foods actually even uh, apple pear uh, plums uh, cherries uh, strawberries and lots of foods contain uh, many dietary fibers and they have positive effect on visceral fat and lean proteins are very important also green tea and soluble fibers aerobic exercise also have very important role because we have studies according to them aerobic exercise have positive effect on visceral fat burning uh, and if we compare which is better aerobic or resistance training aerobic uh, exercise has more effect on visceral fat burning but resistance training is good because it increases basal metabolic rate or in, it increases metabolism during the day so uh, if you increase your metabolism during the day uh, you burning uh, more calories throughout the day and this pot reduction of selective reduction of visceral fat is not possible it's meat but we have some studies according to them aerobic exercise have positive effect on visceral fat so aerobic exercise is solution thank you for your interest thank you for your watching if you like my videos please thumbs up if you like my channel please subscribe thank you very much bye for now